All right, what's up everyone? Today I'm gonna to be speaking about what my course is about and how it can help someone who has a day job trade after their job, right? So firstly, my course focuses on institutional trading and it focuses on it focuses on training you to not do the things that all these YouTube videos and all these forex gurus on Instagram, Facebook tell you to do because they are of a retail mindset. Okay, and when it comes to institutional trading, I will not be reteaching the stuff given by ICT on his free content, but I, I highly encourage all my students to watch his free content, ask me any questions, and we can have solid discussions about them where you can learn through discussions. Okay, that's basically what my course focuses on. Now you might say, okay, um, so why do we have to pay you when we can just get the free information from ICT's YouTube channel? Sure, you can do that as well, but if you do not put in the time and effort into studying his free YouTube content, you are not going to get anywhere. Okay, you are just not going to get anywhere. So what I do is I facilitate your learning by having discussions with you guys on how you can apply these concepts and be profitable while also combining some concepts that I teach, which I have discovered for myself. Okay, so that's what my course uh, focuses on. Now, I got a question asking me, how can I use this course to trade if I cannot um, look at the charts the entire day? What if I have a job? All right, so if you have a job, what you can do is, instead of focusing on the intraday time frames, the five minute, 15 minute, 30 minutes, what you can do is, you can find your setups on the one hour, four hour and daily time frame. Because as you know, on the one hour chart, one bar represents one hour of price action. On the four hour chart, one bar represents four hours of price action. And on the daily chart, one bar represents one day's worth of price action. Okay, so now let me give you an example, right? So if let's say you have a job and if you're in, for example, Malaysia, because that's where I am in, you go to the four hour chart and you could mark up the chart. So let's say, for example, you have, let's, let's take a look at this move here, right? So this move here was caused by a bullish order block and fair value gap. So you draw this across, here's your fair value gap. And here is your bullish order block right here, right? So what you could have done is you could have left a cell limit right over here. Let's not be perfect. So you could have left a cell limit, uh, sorry, a buy limit right over here. Excuse me, a buy limit right over here for whatever stop loss that you like. I personally like 10 pips as my stop loss. So here's my 10 pips. And you would target uh, at either this order block or this high right here. So that's what you'll do for about 180 pips. All right, so let's not be perfect. Let's target just below this order block. So right here, I'll round it up to 150 pips. And that's your trade. So if you have a day job, you could just look at your four hour chart or the one hour chart, look at potential areas of value, keep your buy limit or sell limit, in this case your buy limit, and let price do its job. Right, let price do its job. So that's how you can use my course and ICT's free content to get some solid trades. And look at this, this is a one is to 15 trade. I'm just making 150 pips exactly. This is a one is to 15 trade. You made 15 times your risk. No one else can do that with this much of precision. All right, no one else can do that. Only the people who follow institutional training methods. That is what you can achieve from my course. Okay, so I hope this answers uh, your question. And next, I've also been asked a question as to what do I look for when I first open the charts? 
All right, so let's just reset the chat. Okay, so what I look for is I always look start with the four hour chart and I look for fair value caps, order blocks, liquidity pools, right? So let me just give you one example as to how uh, you could have caught this move just before the news event over here happened. Okay, this was a, a reaction to the news events on I think it was this Thursday. Okay, so let me just press replay, come back right here and I'll show you exactly how you would have done it or how I would have done it. Okay, so step one, I look at the fair value gaps that the IPDA, which ICT dubbed as the interbank price delivery algorithm, uh, finds an area of value. So it, find, it will most likely find an area of value here. And as you saw, it moved up, right? So that's, that's the first thing I've done or I would have done. And then let's go to the one hour chart. So on the one number chart, I want to see uh, solid uh, levels of liquidity as profit targets, right? So uh, if you follow ICT's work, you know that all highs and all lows are perfect for buy side and sell side liquidity. So if I'm looking for a move up, I want to find areas of solid buy side liquidity, which is pretty obvious, right? So we have a high here, then we have a high hold up. We have a high right above this as well here and finally this is a massive pool of buy side liquidity which I'm expecting a price to raid next week hopefully okay so now these I got my profit targets ready I got the area of value in, in discount ready for me to take a trade right so then what I do is I wait for the next day, uh, for the day of the news event. So let's go to 15 minute chart. All right, so let's just go, go to, all right, so this is the London Open Q zone. I did take a trade uh, selling short until uh, this uh, price level right here, but I just want to show you how you could have gotten uh, this move in addition to how I uh, set up my charts when I trade. Alright, so now I know that this is a bullish order block as I've outlined on the 4 hour chart and this is the fair value gap. So I like to keep my buy limits in between the order block and the fair value gap. So let's say around here, alright, right there and put my 10 pip stop, alright, and I just like to get my money within the trading day so the most likely targets due uh, uh, through a red red impact uh, news would be this one and this one right so let's just go above here uh, round it up to 140 pips all right now just watch how precise this gets That is how precise it gets. It goes into the bullish order block, into the fair value gap, and then bam, the news causes it to go up. And let's see if it hits my take profit within this day. Not within this day, it continued going up during the next trading day, which is Friday. And bam, there you go. All right, that would be a nice trade Right, that would be a very solid trade. So that is what I look for when I enter, when I look at the charts. Right, that is exactly what I look for when I look at the charts. Now you might ask me, don't I use the five minute chart to refine my entries? Yeah, you could. So if I go to the five minute chart, uh, let's look at the trading on Friday, Friday's trading, and remember we have a nice level over here, right? But since we have non-farm payroll, non-farm payroll normally, or news events normally, seek out price imbalances. According to ICT, news events seek out price imbalances. So I want to look for a fair value gap up here, right? So I want to look for a fair value gap up here. So let's see. Do we have a fair value gap on the five minute chart? Uh, not on the five minute chart, on the 15 minute chart? Yeah. 
we do. So somewhere here. Now remember, we have a fair value gap and we have an order block as well. So let's put the mean threshold of the order block right there. Enjoy it out in time. All right. So now, how would I have traded this on the five minute chart in anticipation of NFP news, news event, pushing price all the way up here before uh, price going into a consolidation? Or maybe a complete reversal. Okay, so go to the five minute chart. And my thought process first goes to this Is there a fair value gap here? Yes, it was filled up. Am I, am I in London Open or New York Open Q zone? No, I am not. I'm in the time, time zone in between these two periods. Right, so I wait for New York Open Q zone, which is 8 pm my time. So All right, so now we're in we're New York Open Q zone. What am I going to look for? I'm going to look for, again, fair value gap. So where's the fair value gap? Over here, this one right here. Where's the order block? Right here. So this is the bullish order block right here. Okay, so where am I going to keep my buy limit? I like to keep my buy limit at the middle of the order block. Okay, at the middle of the, I'm sorry, pardon me, at the middle of the fair value gap, if price is in the fair value gap. So here's where I get my buy limit, uh, my 10 pip stop. And where am I going to target in anticipation of NFP uh, pushing price here? Here, right? So here we go. Let's round it to 50 pips maybe. 50, yeah right above for a nice round above the old high as well and let's see draw this out in time okay. that's nfp for you and there you go there you go now this imbalance would cause a reversal that's what we expect right we expect an imbalance to cause some form of reversal targeting liquidity so Let's see what happens after that before the weekend arrive. Right, so we ended we ended the week with price uh, trading around the uh, fair value gap and the bearish short block. Okay, so that's basically what I look for when I trade, and these are the most highly probable trades you can find. Of course, learning it from ICT, right? And again, remember, I do not reteach ICT's content. I merely uh, provide help in understanding it. And we discuss on how we can create models using his concepts so that everyone can actually learn how to use his concept, concept in a simple manner, okay? I've done this with most of my students already. Some of them have found immense success doubling their accounts in a week or two. So yeah, that could be you as well. All right. So let me just check if there's any other questions that I need to answer. Mm. All right. So I do have more questions to answer, but I think I'm going to leave that for another video. And that question is, what is my go-to setup? So my go-to setup will be discussed in another video. Okay. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope it answered your questions uh, regarding the Trading Academy and what I look for when I open the charts. Okay, so have a great weekend everyone. Thank you for watching. And again, like, comment and subscribe. See you.